Philosophy Accounting, Julie Bobiak of the Lucaya Cafe, Julie DiNardo of Gleam Smile Center, and the Montague Sisters, who founded Black Owned, which helps uplift and promote other local businesses. And because of these conversations, I know how important this government's initiatives have been. Our national child care strategy has helped more women enter the workforce than ever before. Our women's entrepreneurship strategy is providing loans and investments and a critical knowledge hub. And I believe measures like these are due to the fact we have gender parity in cabinet and Canada's first ever woman here, here. finance minister. Here, here, here. So while conservatives just keep hurling meaningless slogans on this side of the house, we're actually getting things done. The Honourable Member for Riviere du Nord. Mr. Speaker, let's be clear. It's legitimate to demonstrate for peace in the Middle East and to be distressed by the number of civilian casualties. But to demonstrate on October 7th, shouting, we are Ham Hamas, we are Hezbollah, or death to Canada, as we saw in Vancouver, is despicable, Mr. Speaker. And it echoes the excesses we're also hearing in Quebec. The bloc unreservedly condemns this type of language. There's a difference, an ocean, in fact, between freedom of expression and claiming responsibility for recognized terrorist entities. There's an ocean between wanting security and freedom for the Palestinians and calling for the death of Canada. And this from a separatist, Mr. Speaker. Message to those who want a ceasefire for real. Ask your government why it's doing absolutely nothing instead of intimidating your Jewish neighbors in Quebec and Canada who have nothing to do with this. That's the difference between a pro-Palestinian demonstration for peace and an anti-Jewish demonstration for violence. The Honourable Member for Markham Unionville. Speaker, I rise today in support of Bill C-71, a vital piece of, le of legislation that addresses long-standing injustice faced by lost Canadians, individuals who due to the Hopper Conservative first generation limit have been unfairly excluded from Canadian citizenship. These individuals have lived, worked, and contributed to Canada. Bill C 71 will grant citizenship to those who were unfairly impacted by the previous Conservative government while establishing a substantial connection to Canada's test moving forward. I look forward to working with parliamentarians from all parties to get this work done. It is time to right this historical wrong and ensure that all who should rec rightfully be Canadians are recognized as such. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hear, hear. The Honourable Member from Red Deer, Mountain View. One of the great local heroes of Markerville, Alberta, is renowned Icelandic poet Stefan G. Stefansson. Born into poverty in northern Iceland in 1853, he immigrated to the U.S. in 1873 and then, in 1889, to his Markerville home. Farmer by day and prolific poet by night, he composed verse, not in English, but in his native Icelandic. He has been called the greatest poet of the Western world, publishing more than 2,000 pages of high standard poetry. The local Stefan G. Stephenson Icelandic Society, formed 50 years ago, restored the original home site, which is now an Alberta Provincial Historical Site. The Writers Guild of Alberta annually presents the Stephen G. Stephenson Award in his honour as they celebrate this amazing poet and playwright. Recently, Donna Nelson, volunteer extraordinaire, was recognised for her exemplary contribution to the preservation and presentation of Alberta's heritage. Congratulations, Donna. The Honourable Member from Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker. As we celebrate Women's History Month this October, we're reminded of the incredible impact women have made and continue to make in our economy and communities. The theme, Women at Work, Economic Growth, Past, Present and Future, beautifully highlights this ongoing journey. Today, we celebrate incredible local leaders in my riding, like Monique Dennison from the Richmond Hill Board of Trade and Sandra Ferry from the Chamber of Commerce, who are working every day to support businesses. Entrepreneurs like Tanya Lindsay and small business owners like Deborah Clark and Jacqueline Zhang real estate like Heidi Kreiner Lee, and young women like Paris Johnson, and many other women who are so vital to the small and medium businesses in our communities. Over the last 40 years, women have powered one-third of Canada's economic growth, and there's still so much potential ahead. Our government not only celebrates women's history, 
but believes in their future. We will always support women and protect their rights, unlike the official opposition and its leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bravo. The Honourable Member from saint -Lerin. Speaker, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a time to increase awareness and raise funds for research into its cause, prevention, diagnosis, treatment and cure. Our government has financed Our government has funded a study into preventive care to help to accelerate various uh, treatments for breast cancer. More and more women, particularly Indigenous women and black women with breast cancer in 40 years uh, are 40 years old and not 50. There's not enough Canadian research to justify making a change. Mr. Speaker, that in itself is unacceptable and indicates that we need more relevant and recent research on, done on women's health that must include Black, Asian and Indigenous women. Unfortunately, in some provinces, the recommendation to start screening is at 50. This means that many people are diagnosed already at an advanced stage which reduces their chance of survival. All of the awesome organizations and businesses, including Pink in the City and Alphabet Cafe, who have campaigns of their own for this very worthy cause. Your contributions are saving lives, and we want to thank you very much. The Honourable, the Honourable Member from New Brunswick Southwest. Mr. Speaker, DFO officials in writing told me 10 months ago they would work with the Harbour Authority at Sealy's Cove on critical wharf repairs. Yesterday, DFO announced this federal wharf would be condemned. And I've discovered no discussions about repairs at Sealy's Cove happened with the Harbour Authority. In other words, I was misled by a public servant. This is after the Liberals cut small craft harbour funding in my New Brunswick riding, as well as in neighbouring Fundy Royal this year to support Liberal ridings. The Fisheries Minister even allocated $45 million to wharves in her Quebec riding this summer to save her next in the, neck in the next elections. No wonder Canadians believe this Liberal government is corrupt. It is inexcusable for DFO officials to lie to a member of Parliament. It is unforgivable for public servants to operate like, par like partisan Liberals. What the hell is going on at DFO, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans? <laughs> Before the member continues, I'm going to ask the honourable member from New Brunswick Southwest to uh, please uh, withdraw the language which is not considered parliamentary. Uh, I'm going to ask the honourable member from this, uh, New Brunswick Southwest to withdraw that word which is not considered parliamentary. I withdraw that unparliamentary language. The rest stand. And if I could encourage all members uh, to please, uh, uh, this is the second time in two days. Uh, that this has happened, uh, and I would ask members, please, uh, to avoid using language which is clearly not parliamentary. Alors, s'il vous plaît. Order, please. Alors, order, please. The honourable member for Vimy. Tourism brings people together and fosters a sense of national pride. This week, the Tourism Industry Association of Canada is holding their Hill Days events to showcase our tourism industry and to highlight the importance of the visitor economy. I want to thank them for their work and advocacy for Canadian tourism businesses. Notre our government supports the tourism sector with programs like the Tourism Growth Program available in all regional development agencies. The Conservatives are jeopardizing tourism business support programs with their austerity policies. We know that investing in tourism leads to economic growth, job creation, environmental protection, and supports the flourishing of local culture, including Indigenous heritage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Sask Saskatoon University. More proof the NDP Liberals are not worth the, the cost crime or the corruption. The Attorney General found that Liberal appointees, the Green, Green Slush Fund, gave nearly 400 million taxpayers' dollars to their own companies, with over 186 conflict of interest alone, at a time when Canadians can't afford to eat, heat and house themselves. The Speaker has ruled that the NDP Liberal Costly Coalition violated the House orders to turn over evidence to the police for a criminal investigation into the latest scandal. Obstruction of justice? Anybody? Anybody? 
Instead of coming clean, the NDP Liberals have chosen to paralyze Parliament, pushing aside all work uh, that we're doing to address the doubling of ho housing costs, food inflation, and the crime and chaos on our streets. Will the NDP Liberals end the cover-up and give evidence to the police so we can finally get accountability for corruption and Parliament can get back to work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Honourable Member for Chicoutimi La Fior. Mr. Speaker, I'm very concerned for our forestry workers in the regions who are deeply attached to their profession. The Liberals with the support of the Bloc are not only ignoring their concerns, but threatening them with a decree that will kill at least 1,400 jobs. The Minister of the Environment's decision will seriously jeopardize the survival uh, of this region without even having to take in the trouble to meet them. What we know is that the Bloc is no longer a party of the regions. It will continually uh, convoys the outskirts of Montreal. The proof is the no nomination of their new candidate, Patrick Bonin, who has taken a clear position in favour of the decree and is asking the federal government to intervene. Wow, it's really the Bloc Liberal Coalition. The Bloc Liberal Coalition has no understanding of what's happening in our regions. Ignoring these realities will not only be responsible, but also re reveal a ga glaring gap between Montreal's concerns and those of the regions. It's time to take action to protect jobs and the future of our regions. Let's put an end to this hypocrisy and give way to common sense. The Honourable Member for Vaudreuil Soulange. Mr. Speaker, as we approach International Spain Day, I rise to pay tribute to the Canadians of Spanish descent who have helped build this incredible country. By hundreds of thousands, Canadians of Spanish descent have made Canada stronger, generously and proudly adding their language, history and culture to the great tapestry that we call our country. ...today for the first time. In the presence of the Spanish Ambassador to Canada, His Excellency Alfredo Martina Serrano, his wife Rosa Martina Serrano, State Secretary Olmedo, members of this House, as well as prominent members of Canada's Spanish community, the ceremony served to reinforce the strong ties between Canada and Spain and honour those like my own grandparents and great-grandparents who came to our shores following a long journey across the Atlantic. May the strong ties between Canada and Spain only continue to grow, Mr. Speaker, and may Spain and Canada see peace and prosperity in our time. Yeah, yeah. Gracias. Merci. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Vancouver East. As the catastrophic war rages on in Sudan, thousands of children are facing imminent death from malnutrition. Gender-based violence targeting women and girls, including sexual assault, is being used as a weapon of war. To date, not one single person has been brought to safety, and the minister is not expecting any arrivals this year. Lives are lost as they wait for the application to be processed. The NDP is once again calling for the government to expedite processing, allow trusted organizations like the IOM to help with biometrics, remove the 3,000... 250 arbitrary application cap and expand the program to include vulnerable children and those who were outside of Sudan prior to April 15, 2023 and can't get back home due to the war. Over 286,000 Ukrainians had arrived in Canada under the CREATE program. Sudanese Canadians deserve equitable treatment in the world's largest displacement crisis. Here, here. <laughs> The Honourable Member for Drummond. There are parts of our history that the great history has left behind, which find themselves erased in the limbo of oblivion. And yet history cannot be adequately explained without these all too frequently forgotten pivotal moments. Fortunately, in Quebec, we have documentary filmmakers who shed an unusual, unique light on our society, stepping outside the official lines to help us rediscover ourselves. These unmasking men and women of the past, of the discarded real, are to whom we are indebted. Pierre Perrault, Denis Arcan, Michel Brault, Pierre Filardeau, Manon Barbeau, we'll prosper to name a few. Félix Rose, who is in Ottawa today, belongs to this long lineage of history tellers. He reminds us of significant events we've left out of the uh, national narrative, whether it's the latest uh, Felkis or the Bataille de Saint-Léonard, which he will be presenting in Gatineau this evening. Mr. Rose, we salute the exceptional and indispensable work uh, uh, of you that, as a documentary filmmaker, and I would ask everyone to attend these conscious raising films in large numbers.
The Honourable Ma colleagues, chers collègues, colleagues. Sorry, the Honourable Member from Durham. Mr. Speaker, after nine years, the NDP Liberals are making Canada unsafe. Violent crime is up 50%. And under this Prime Minister, hate crimes are up 251%. To make matters worse, the NDP Liberals are allowing a terrorist organization to operate freely within our borders, refusing to list Sami Dune as a terrorist organization under the Anti-Terrorism Act. Israel and Germany have already listed Sami Dune as a terrorist organization. The EU deported the leadership of Sami Dune. What exactly are the NDP Liberals waiting for? Common sense conservatives will ban Sami Dune under the Anti-Terrorism Act and make sure that they do not operate within our borders. We will protect Canadians of all faiths and all cultures, bring home safe streets, and ensure that Canadians can live in peace within our communities. The Honourable Member from Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, in Canada and around the world, we have seen the emergence of radical far-right movements. These movements have had a profound impact on the type of governments that have been elected and on the lives of millions of people around the world, including here in Canada. They've organized disinformation campaigns designed to divide people and undermine confidence in reliable sources of information. They've impacted how some people treat others. They've impacted how some politicians treat others, including here in Canada, and they've led to some politicians acting against the best interests of Canadians by opposing sound economic policies, by opposing, opposing sound social policies like dental care or child care or better long-term care, by undermining fundamental rights like those protected in our charter, like women's rights, like a woman's right to choose, and by standing against measures to stand up to aggressors like Russia who pose a threat to us all. I urge us all to work together to stop the growth and influence of these far-right movements here, because here. it is essential to Canada's security, to our economy, and to our freedom. Questions or how? Oral questions. Lana have said in opposition. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives would have liked to work hard in Parliament today to do something about real estate inflation that has doubled costs over nine years of this Liberal government, or food inflation, which is 36 percent higher than in the United States. But unfortunately, instead, Parliament is paralyzed due to this Prime Minister. He paralyzed this House by blocking the documents that we ordered to be sent to the RCMP about a $400 million scandal. What exactly is this Prime Minister hiding? The Honorable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What the Leader of the Opposition said is completely false. Let me read what the RCMP said about this motion. They said there is a significant risk that this motion may be seen as a way of sidestepping normal inquiry processes and protecting the Charter. We are ready to send this to committee and return to the important business of this House. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, this is, a, this is a $400 million scandal, eight times more than the sponsorship scandal in financial terms. The AG has found that there were 186 conflicts of interest. The leader of the Green Slush Fund has already be, been found guilty of violating the law. When someone steals from you, do you call the cops or do you simply send a matter to a committee? The Honorable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, it's very clear that Canadians have had enough of the little games played by the Conservative Party, and they're tired of these Conservative slogans. 
they've also had enough of the conservative filibustering. On this side of the House, as we've said several times, we will always be here to protect people's rights and freedoms in Canada. We will always stand up for democracy and we will fight for Canada. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Conservatives would have liked to be working today to counter the doubling of housing costs this Prime Minister has caused, or the record food price inflation, which has been 36 percent higher in Canada than in the U.S. But unfortunately, the Prime Minister has paralyzed Parliament by refusing your ruling directing his government to turn over evidence in the $400 million green slush fund scandal that the, ver the Auditor General says involves 186 conflicts of interest, wow. with the chair of the fund found guilty. What has he got to hide? Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the, of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition is not being truthful with Canadians. It is the RCMP Commissioner himself who said the RCMP's ability to receive and use information obtained through this production order and under the compulsory powers afforded by the Auditor General Act in the course of a criminal investigation could give rise to concerns under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It is therefore highly unlikely that any information obtained by the RCMP under the motion where privacy interests exist could be used to support a criminal prosecution or further a criminal investigation. Mr. Speaker, let's get this. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. This is a $400 million scandal involving Liberal appointees giving millions of dollars to their own companies, and the minister's story is now changing. Yep. Last week, she claimed that the government had given documents to the RCMP. This week, they claim that if they gave documents to the RCMP, it would cause the Charter of Rights to come crashing down. <laughs> it sounds like there's a new story every week to justify paralyzing Parliament to cover up the truth. What is in these documents about this $400 million scandal that the Prime Minister is so afraid of? The Honourable Leader of the, of the Government in the House of Commons. Speaker, this is a typical witch hunt from the Leader of the Opposition to go after people who have nothing to do with this. These are files such as personnel files that contain private information of individuals who have nothing to do with what is going on. Mr. Speaker, it is the RCMP and the Auditor General themselves who raise concerns with this motion, and it is the government's view that we should send this to committee so that we can get on with the important work of this House and protect the rights of Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. A witch hunt. The ethics commissioner appointed by this government has found the chair of the fund in violation of the law. The auditor general, also appointed by this government, says there were 186 conflicts of interest involving liberal appointees giving millions of dollars to their own companies. $400 million. Potential criminality, according to the main whistleblower in the scandal. Any other employer would tur voluntarily turn over all the evidence to the police if it had been ripped off by its own staff. What is the Prime Minister hiding? Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, if and when the police request that information, it will obviously be handed over because that is proper judicial process. But when it is Parliament that is doing it, this is where Canadians should be concerned, Mr. Speaker, because when he is going after the rights of other Canadians, it's only a matter of time before his political vendettas come after the rights of all Canadians. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, just to be clear here, the Bloc Québécois tabled Bill C-282 to exempt supply management from any future trade negotiations. All parties in this House have at different times supported that bill, which is now in the Senate. Now, I'd like to be very clear. The government has executive power based on its democratic election 
does this government still agree that supply management should be exempted from all further trade negotiations in future? The Honourable Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. Mr. Speaker, and being a dairy farmer for a large portion of my life, I fully understand and appreciate the value of the supply management program, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the, our government fully supports Bill C-282 and urges the other place to move on this legislation as quickly as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now I have the plea of The Honourable Member. Let me further clarify, Mr. Speaker. There are two senators, neither of them elected. They're not saying that they're not sure. They're saying very clearly that supply management should be up for grabs in future trade negotiations. It should not be excluded from them. They are saying the opposite of what the government is saying. By not imposing its will on two non-elected senators, is this government turning its backs on agricultural producers in Quebec and Canada? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, my colleague should not come to me to say that our government is turning its backs on dairy producers. We have always been there for dairy producers from the very beginning, and we will continue to stand up for them. Mr. Speaker, we decided to appoint independent senators and once again, I think the Bloc Québécois should be able to understand this concept. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. You won't believe this. Corporate landlords are using AI technology to rip off renters. They're jacking up rent. Now, the United States is taking legal action against this, but the Liberals are letting it happen here in Canada. Yes, now, I know are. the Conservatives don't care because their chief advisor is also a chief lobbyist for corporate landlords. Uh, yes. But what's the Liberals' excuse? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, I thank my honourable colleague for his question and his concern for the rising cost of rent, which I completely agree is a very serious issue. Where we differ is we're not satisfied with just launching complaints on the floor of the House of Commons. We want to advance policies that actually put solutions on the table that make a meaningful difference for families. That's why we're putting measures in place to help build more homes, like cutting taxes on apartment construction. It's why we're increasing investments to build more affordable housing, and it's why we put a renter's bill of rights on the table to help protect renters in precarious situations. I only wish the NDP would care enough to join us in trying to do something about the problem. Gonna have deputy to Burnaby. The honourable member of Burnaby South. Excuses are way cheaper than rent. Shimadawa, Shimadawa First Nation has had undrinkable water since 2018, and this Liberal government is fighting them in court, arguing that they do not have a legal responsibility to clean the water. They're also arguing that when a minister says something, that's just politics. That's not something you have to believe that they're actually going to do. Will the Liberals call off the lawyers and clean up the water? Yeah. 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 The Honourable Minister for Indigenous Services. Well, Mr. Speaker, that's exactly what we've been doing over the last nine years, cleaning up the mess that the Conservatives left behind with over $8 billion in investments in clean water um, operation plants across the country, Mr. Speaker, and we have legislation, uh, incidentally, tied up in committee. Hopefully, oh. it will get to this House shortly. I will be testifying tomorrow about the legislation. There are hundreds of chiefs that have called on the NDP and the Conservatives to get this legislation moving through the House, so we never go back to that time again. The Honourable Member from New Westminster, Burnaby, knows what I'm about to say, so I'm going to ask him to please not take the mic and must recognize. The Honourable Member from Haldeman, Norfolk. After nine years of the NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and now time is up. Mr. Speaker, you ruled that the government has violated the House order to turn over evidence to the RCMP related to the $400 million green slush fund scandal. Yet, 
The Liberal government continues to obstruct justice by refusing to turn over these documents. When will they end this cover-up and let the House focus on solving the housing, food and inflation crisis that they created? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What the member opposite is saying is absolutely false. It is the Conservatives who are filibustering their own motion in this House because it is the RCMP and the Auditor General have, who have both raised their extreme discomfort with the motion that the Conservatives have put forward. If the Conservatives want to get back to work, we are ready to send this to committee to make sure that we can talk about the issues that matter to Canadians. That's what Liberals are here to do. We don't understand why Conservatives don't want to do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Haldeman Norfolk. The truth is, it is the Liberal government that is obstructing justice and holding Parliament in contempt by refusing to hand over documents to the RCMP. Now we know why. The Auditor General has found that the Liberal appointed board members gave nearly $400 million to their own companies. Oh. This is happening at a time when Canadians can barely afford food to eat and poverty diseases like scurvy have resurfaced in this country. Will the NDP Liberals take accountability and just hand over those documents yeah. to the yeah. Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, three times in this question period I've heard the Conservatives talk about obstructing justice. Let's just talk about how justice works in this country. When law enforcement wants to prosecute an individual, they... Colleagues, I'm going to invite the Honourable Minister of uh, Justice and Attorney General to start from the top. Mr. Speaker, three times in this question period so far, I've heard Conservatives talk about obstructing justice. Let's talk about how justice actually operates in a democracy. Law enforcement has a reasonable suspicion about an individual or an entity. They then go and seek a search warrant from a court so that they can invade that person's privacy and obtain the documents. Instead of pursuing the normal court processes, we have Conservatives saying we're going to subvert all of that for the purposes of partisan gain. This is what we do in, in a democracy. We stand up for judicial processes and we stand up for the Charter of Rights. We will always do that on this side of the House. I'm not able to hear all comments, but I did hear the comments from the member from uh, Glengarry Prescott, Russell, asked him not to take the microphone until, he, uh, uh, until he's recognized by the Speaker. The Honourable Member from uh, Dufferin Caledon. Taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up. Time is up and corruption is off the charts. A fish rots from the head down. So is it any wonder that Liberal cronies appointed to the Green Slush Fund by a Prime Minister twice convicted of ethics violations engaged in corruption? And this is not small corruption, Mr. Speaker. It's $400 million. And Mr. Speaker, you ordered the production of these documents. Why won't these Liberals stop the cover-up and produce them? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, it's only nine minutes in question period and slogans are up, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> slogans are up again. Canadians are sick and tired of them, Mr. Speaker, repeating the same false things, Mr. Speaker, and repeating the same slogan. What these Conservatives are about, Mr. Speaker, is that going after the personal file of employees and former employees. They're targeting STDC today. Who are they going to target tomorrow? That's what on this side of the house. We stand for democracy. We'll stand for rights. We'll stand up for Canada. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Calden. It's pretty simple who we're targeting, Mr. Speaker. We're targeting corruption, corruption that they enabled, Absolutely. corruption that they're hiding, and corruption that they refuse to produce the documents for. Right. Mr. Speaker, these are documents that you ordered the production of. So Canadians should ask themselves, why aren't they producing them? They're not producing them because they are so damaging. They are so bad. They will destroy this government. And therefore, they've used up seven days of House of Commons time to hide their, to hide their corruption. Stop the corruption. Produce the documents. Right. Colleagues, 
The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Speaker, again, the Conservatives are saying things that are false. The only party that has been putting up speakers for the past week are the yeah. Conservatives. So they are the ones that are filibustering their own motion. But let's talk about why they might be filibustering that motion. Rob Walsh, the former law clerk, said, In my humble opinion, it is an abuse of its powers for the House to use its power to demand a Colleagues, it is so important for us to allow one speaker to speak at a time because we have a very large place here with many members. It's difficult for those who require the use of their earphones to be able to hear the interpretation. So the Honourable government, Leader of the Government, I'm going to ask her to repeat her answer again because I know that I've got some hand signals from members who were not able to hear uh, that answer. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I notice the volume guts up when they don't want to hear the truth. So uh, let's go back to that. The only members of Parliament who have been debating this motion are Conservative members of Parliament. They are filibustering their own motion. And let me tell you why, Mr. Speaker. It might have something to do with Rob Walsh, the former law clerk, who stated, it is an abuse of its powers for the House to use its power to demand and get documents from the government in order to transfer transfer them to a third party that wouldn't otherwise receive them or to compel the government to give documents to the third party. They want to get around the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. They're going after Canadians. Who's next? The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, in La Presse this morning, we saw that Miriam Bandoui, 15 years old, was killed by a stray bullet. Thomas Trudel, 16, also died due to a shooting, a 14-year-old lost their life while trying to set a fire in Beauce, and a French tourist and her 7-year-old daughter were visiting Montreal and died in an arson attack. The Minister of Justice has blamed the government of Quebec for this, but the Liberal government is responsible for all this violence. When will they finally trigger an election so we can fix this? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my colleague knows very well that we are working with the provinces in order to do something about exactly this type of violence. We are constantly speaking with police forces, with provincial public safety ministers, and we will continue to provide the necessary resources to our police forces. Something that the Conservatives did not do. They cut funding to the CPSA and RCMP. The Honourable Member, well, this morning, Montreal's chief of police said in an interview that in order to do something about crime in Montreal, he needs the right laws and regulations in place. But for nine years, the Liberal government has only been bringing in legislation that actually weakened our ability to address crime. Today, criminals are just running around in the streets unafraid of police forces or the justice system. Will this prime minister bring the legislation back to how it was under the Conservatives, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. On this side of the House, we have invested in our borders. We have invested in our police forces. And we have invested in increasing penalties for things like auto crime. We know that if there are issues that have to do with provincial jurisdiction, we need to ask questions to governments like the Legault government. We need to ask them about how the staffing levels are at their detention centers. We need to ask them about the details of their police services. It's this type of thing that we need to fix the problem. The Honourable Minister, Member for Belleuil Chambly. Mr. Speaker, the Minister said to me that I should not in any way say that she's turning her back on producers, but I think this government is turning its back on producers. They don't seem to care about these 6,000 businesses in Quebec or 100,000 jobs. They don't seem to care at all. Time is up. And all they're actually doing is providing us with excellent arguments for Quebec independence. The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, 
the Liberals stand completely behind the supply managed system. Our dairy, poultry, and egg producers have our full support. Farmers have two real options. Only two real options for the future. A liberal government that believes in the current system and wants to protect it, or the other option, which is not at all unanimous on the topic of supply management. The Honorable Member for Bédé Champigny. Well, there are two other options. Electing a maximum number of Bloc Québécois MPs or sovereignty. That's the other two options. There are just so many failures on the part of this Liberal government. They are so incompetent. Soon it will be too late. Pretty soon even the NDP won't be able to show its face with these Liberals. Who's really the boss here in Canada? The Prime Minister or two unelected Senators? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. À l'ordre, s'il vous plaît. The Honourable Minister des Services Publics et Services Publics et de la. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, my colleague spoke about incompetence. If there's someone who's really unable to do anything for farmers and producers, it's the leader of the Bloc Québécois, because he's chosen to constantly go on a about sovereignty and independence instead of actually addressing our urgent issues. This bill on supply management, the only reason it exists is that there was a liberal government in power at the time and that that power, that liberal government is still in power. If it were a conservative or a bloc government, we wouldn't have that legislation. The Honourable Member from Mission Maspie, Fraser Canyon. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and time is up. The Auditor General reported 186 conflicts of interest and over $400 million in misspent funds that went to Liberal insiders. The Minister of Environment's former employer, Cycle Capital, received 250 mil from the Green Slush Fund, wow. all while over half of Canadian small businesses are losing money year over year. Why is it okay for Liberals to enrich their friends while small businesses are struggling to stay afloat? Here, here. Wow. The Honourable Minister of Innovation. You know, Mr. Speaker, what's not okay is for the Conservative to repeat the same thing time and time again when they know it's false, Mr. Speaker. Exactly. Because the reality, and let's talk about facts, Mr. Speaker. The entity they're talking about was created in 2001. It was managed by the Conservative for nine years, Mr. Speaker. The CEO of that organization is gone, the board is gone, and the foundation no longer exists, Mr. Speaker. That is the reality. What the Conservative are about is going after ordinary Canadians, those who work at this organization, Mr. Speaker. We're going to stand for democracy, we're going to stand for rights, and we're going to stand for the work that this needs to be done by this house, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Fraser, sorry, Mission. The Honourable Member from Mission Maspie, Fraser Canyon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canada lost 9,037 businesses from May to June 2024 and 6,331 declared insolvency year over year. The closures we're witnessing right now haven't been this large since the pandemic when the entire country was shut down. So when Canadian entrepreneurs and workers are struggling, business is still booming for Liberal insiders. Why is the Prime Minister hiding behind the Green Slush Fund documents, and when will he release them to Parliament? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. We're going to continue to support small and medium-sized businesses. We are empowering entrepreneurs. We're increasing the lifetime capital gains exemption. We're investing in Canadian startups. We're boosting government procurement for small and medium-sized businesses and supporting Indigenous entrepreneurs as well. And Mr. Speaker, it gives me the opportunity to also announce here that we've negotiated agreements with both MasterCard and Visa to lower those interchange fees by up to 27 wow. percent, which takes place as of October 19th of this month. We were, we'll continue to support small businesses, Mr. Speaker. Thank Thank you so much. The Honourable Member from Perth, Wellington. After nine years of these NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, 
Crime is up and time is up. Mr. Speaker, you yourself ruled that this government violated an order of this House to turn over evidence to the police for a criminal investigation into the latest Liberal scandal. Mm -hmm. The government's refusal to accept your ruling has paralyzed Parliament, pushing aside our work to address the doubling of housing costs, food inflation, crime and chaos. Mm -hmm. Will the minister end the cover-up, give the proof to the RCMP so we can get Parliament working again for all Canadians? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, what the members opposite are saying is not true. Your ruling was very clear. Because of the unprecedented nature of that motion, it should go to the Procedure and House Affairs Committee for study. The RCMP and the Auditor General raised their extreme discomfort with the Conservative motion. Canadians should be concerned because the Conservatives are going after whoever they hold a political grudge against, and this could be them next. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Montmagny, Lille, Kamouraska, Rivière du Loup. Mr. Speaker, this is a $400 million scandal. That's the amount of taxpayer money that has ended up in the pockets of Liberal buddies. Meanwhile, Canadians are facing food insecurity, crime, and skyrocketing housing costs. And instead, this liberal corruption is blocking our parliamentary work. It is completely paralyzed due to this liberal government's corruption and financial mismanagement. Will this government finally provide the documents so that we can get back to work? The Honorable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleague spoke about financial accountability, and here's what the RCMP had to say about responsibility. He said that the RCMP is an arm's length organization and that it completely, he completely supports the independence of police forces in a democratic society, which means that this House and government cannot direct police operations. Can anything be clearer than that? Do the Conservatives need a briefing with a leader of the RCMP? It should be clear enough, in my opinion. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Griesbach. This week, the Honourable Chiefs from the Prince Albert Grand Council are in Ottawa fighting for their people. In their communities, overcrowding and poor quality housing is leading to mental, physical and social crisis. Tuberculosis, a disease that has run rampant during the residential school time, is on the rise again in Indigenous communities. Wow. Children are dying. Why has the government continued the decades-old liberal and conservative tradition of refusing to provide the needed funding to end this cycle? The Honourable Minister for Indigenous Relations Mr. Services. Speaker, every step of the way over the past nine years, this government has worked with First Nations leaders, Indigenous leaders across the country to restore rights and to restore self-determination and to restore funding, Mr. Speaker, that was under heavy attack from the Conservative Party of Canada. We have so much more to do together, including on working on mental health, which this government continues to support First Nations-led solutions for. We're going to continue this hard work with partners. Exactly Exactly like the ones that are here today. The Honourable Member from Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals' misguided one size fits none return to office mandate is hurting workers and Canadians trying to access vital public services. This rushed mandate was done without due consultation, unfairly impacting dedicated workers. Is this the Liberals' method of natural attrition or an underhanded attack on skilled public servants? We know Conservatives sure don't have workers' backs, but will the Liberals repeal this unfair mandate? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board and Minister for Transport. Mr. Speaker, my Honourable colleague is exactly right. Conservatives do not have workers back, unlike this side of the House. Yes. Our top priority is to deliver quality programs and services to Canadians. We are committed to ensuring that our public servants are supported through this change to the Directive on Hybrid Work. It's our expectation that departments work with their union management committees during the implementation phases that are before us, the clerk and the department heads will continue to monitor and work with the unions and the public service. Thank you. 
The Honourable Member from Winnipeg South Centre. Mr. Speaker, recently I stood alongside the Premier of Manitoba, federal colleagues and health care workers as we made a major investment of $630 million in the province's health care system. After Conservatives in Manitoba decimated health care over a decade of cuts and closures, this funding was desperately needed. The redevelopment of Portage Place is a generational project aimed at revitalizing the downtown core, in large part by establishing a new state-of-the-art health care facility. It simply does not happen without federal support. Can the Minister for Prairies can outline how our government is supporting this significant redevelopment and what it means for the future of Winnipeg? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister. Thank you for that question. Mr. Speaker, big things are happening in Winnipeg's downtown. Thanks to collaboration between the three levels of government, the private sector, and Southern Chiefs, we're revitalizing the core of our city to make it more livable for everyone. Despite calls by Conservative uh, politicians to cut funding to Prairie Scan, uh, we are making a, a significant federal investment in the redevelopment of Porter's Place to build more homes that people can afford. To, to, to a new, build a new health care centre in the centre of downtown and, and offer other public spaces. Mr. Speaker, we are walking a new path together and Winnipeggers are proud. Sure. The Honourable Member from Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, time is up. The corruption of this Liberal government knows no bounds. The Liberal Minister of Employment has continuously misled Parliament about his alter ego, the other Randy. Texts from his business partner reference a Randy, and we now know there was no other Randy involved in the fraudulent medical supply company while he was a sitting member of Cabinet. When will the Minister come clean with Canadians, end this charade, and resign? <laughs> The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Ethics Commissioner has looked into this matter three times and each time has confirmed he has no concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Edmonton West. Mr. Speaker, after nine long years of this Liberal NDP government, taxes are up, costs are up, corruption is up, and apparently the amount of Randy's is up. <laughs> the Minister of Employment has been accused of violating the law by engaging in proper business dealings with his corrupt, scandal-plagued partner. The Minister claimed he wasn't involved in this business, but was later forced to admit that he was. He should admit he is the other Randy and that he violated the law. When will the Minister come clean and admit to everyone what we all know? <laughs> The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Mr. Speaker, as I just said, the Ethics Commissioner has looked into this matter three times and each time has confirmed he has no concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Calgary Shepherd. Nine years of this NDP Liberal government. Taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and time is now up for them. The Liberal Minister from Edmonton claimed he had no contact with his business partner during an alleged half a million dollar fraud linked to the other Randy. But phone records and text messages now show the complete opposite. Right. Seems the Minister made a habit of bending the rules and using his influence to benefit his business partner. The same business partner that you, Speaker, have now found is in contempt of Parliament. Right. So it's really simple. Will the Minister admit that the charade is up and then admit that he broke the law and confirm that he is in fact the other Randy? Hear, hear. Hear, hear. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In case my Honourable colleague didn't hear my previous answer, as I stated, the Ethics Commissioner has looked into this matter three times and each time has confirmed he has no concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, fact one, PFLP is a listed terrorist entity. Fact two, Khaled Berghat was a member of PFLP when he founded Sammy Dune in 2012 and his wife Charlotte Cates incorporated Sammy Dune under Canadian law in 2021. Fact three, under section 8305 of the criminal code, any entity that has knowingly acted on behalf of, at the direction of, or in association with a listed entity can be listed. The facts are clear, the government's position is not. Why hasn't the government listed Sammy Dune as a terrorist entity under yeah, the government? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for P Public Security. Mr. Speaker, the government's position has in fact been very clear. Decisions around listing terrorist entities are made based on the advice of security and intelligence officials. 
My colleague, the Parliamentary Secretary, made it clear yesterday. I have instructed the security and intelligence agencies that report to us to do on an expedited basis a review of these matters. And I've said, Mr. Speaker, we hope to come back to Canadians with information very soon. The Honourable Member for Shefford. When we demand an increase in old age security payments for 65 to 74 year olds, the Minister of Seniors accuses us of saying no to seniors. But he should know that the Bloc Québécois is on team yes. Yes to pensioners, yes to improving their living conditions, yes to no longer having two categories of seniors. It's the Minister who is on team no. His only achievement since taking office has been to say no to pension increases. That is his only achievement saying no. Why doesn't he join Team Yes to Seniors? The Honourable Minister of Labour and Seniors. I would like to reassure my colleague and the entire Bloc Québécois that we know that they're saying yes to seniors. But, Mr. Speaker, they said no a lot, too. They've said no to all increases in supports to Quebec and Canadian seniors. 2.4 million seniors are benefiting from the GIS increase. We increased it, but the Bloc Québécois voted against that. The Honourable Member for Shefford. The Bloc Québécois is not alone in saying yes to seniors. 79% of Canadians say yes to increasing old age security for 65 to 74 year olds. The House of Commons says yes. Seniors say yes. Seniors groups are saying yes, including the FADOC, the AQDR, and the AREC. Imagine even the AREC from Oudaway, the minister's own region, came out to support us on the Hill. The minister is standing alone. In fact, in his riding alone, he could help 12,000 people. Can he wake up? Today, Verdun. Tomorrow, Gatineau. The Honourable Minister of Labour and Seniors. Well, I have often visited my colleague's beautiful region. I encourage her to visit Udaway. The Udaway is my region, and when she's in the Udaway, she can explain to the 14,000 people in her riding of Shefford, because those 14,000 in her riding are today benefiting from the Canada Dental Care Plan. And she can explain to them, Mr. Speaker, why she voted against that. I encourage all members, including and especially the member for Lac Saint Jean, to not rise before having been recognized by the chair. Oh, I may be mistaken in who I named, and if that is the case, then I do apologize. But uh, the members uh, in that part of the room, please do not take the floor before recognized by the chair. After nine years, the NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, grocery prices are up, and time is up. A year ago, the Liberals promised to lower food prices by Thanksgiving. Yep. All Canadians got were empty promises and empty stomachs. Now they're going to pay $80 for a turkey this Thanksgiving. Right. Food inflation in Canada is 37% higher than the United States. Food security is up 111% thanks to the NDP Liberal carbon tax. Well, the NDP Liberal government acts the carbon tax so Canadians can afford a Thanksgiving dinner. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I can assure the member that it's much cheaper at Thanksgiving dinner in Shawinigan. I don't know where he's shopping for his turkey, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'll invite him to my house in Shawinigan. He'll find out it's a bit cheaper. But, Mr. Speaker, the reality is what is this government has done, and it's said by all the economists in, in Canada, Mr. Speaker, what we've done, which is the most significant thing, is to reform competition in this country, Mr. Speaker, to have less concentration, more choice for consumer, which stabilized price, Mr. Speaker. And in addition, they should celebrate. We now have a gross record of conduct in this country, Mr. Speaker, to bring more fairness and stabilized price in the country. The Honourable Member from Foothills. I don't think many Canadians find the minister making fun of their struggles much of a joke. That's right. Because the reality is, for many Canadians, buying that turkey for Thanksgiving right. is just a dream. 
The Liberal NDP government has made the Canadian dream a food bank nightmare. A million Canadians just in Ontario went to a food bank last year, up 25 per cent. And now Canadians are raising, like doctors are raising the alarm from scurvy in Canada because Canadians can't afford basic nutrition. Will the Liberal NDP government make the Canadian dream come true and call a carbon tax election? Yeah, let's go. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, I'm proud that in 2016 we introduced the Canada Child Benefit. Mr. Speaker, there's 4.3 million families and over 7 million children across this country who receive this benefit each and every month. That's $547 a month for parents with children ages 6 to 18, or $648 each month. I got to speak recently with a new mom named Madeline who shared how impactful this is for her family. The position the Conservatives have... L'honorable député de Portneuf... The Honourable Member for Portneuf, Jacques Cartier. Mr. Speaker, it's just unreal how out of touch this Liberal government is. Over the past nine years of this Liberal government, the cost of living has skyrocketed. I urge the Liberals to climb down from their ivory tower and go to a grocery store. It's crazy how high prices are, how much they've gone up. And the Bloc Québécois is constantly voting to keep this Liberal government in place. I beg the Bloc Québécois to please not take Quebecers for fools. When is this Liberal government going to have some common sense and stop wasting the money of honest and hardworking Canadians? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Conservatives are very hypocritical. They talk about Canadians in need, but they don't support funding community food programs and not-for-profit organizations. They talk about people living on the street, but they oppose investments to build more housing. They have a hidden agenda, Mr. Speaker, and everything they say in this House is utter nonsense. Uh, the Honourable Member for Saint-Léonard, Saint-Michel. Mr. Speaker, Montreal's East End is brimming with opportunities. Last November, at the Sommet de l'Est, the Minister of Economic Development announced $30 million for businesses and organizations in the East End through the initiative to support economic development in Montreal's East End. Can the minister tell us how our government is supporting the enormous potential of Montreal's East End to become a leading centre of economic and social development in Quebec? The Honourable Minister of Regional Development, of Tourism, pardon me. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague. We are both members for areas in the East End of Montreal. Last week, I announced the launch of a call for proposals for social innovation projects in the East End of Montreal. This is the first time that a $1 million investment will lead to new social and innovation projects that will generate economic, social and environmental benefits in the East End of Montreal. Mr. Speaker, I invite all businesses to submit their applications by November 29th. We are here to support the East End of Montreal to ensure that it's part of tomorrow's economy. Thank you. Then I have the, uh, the Honourable Member from Wellington Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the government has all sorts of excuses why it won't provide documents to this House or to the RCMP about the $400 million spending scandal. They falsely claim it would violate privacy and that it would negatively impact the RCMP's investigation and that it would violate charter rights. The Constitution is clear. Parliament is supreme. Parliament has the lawful authority to produce to order the production of documents. So why is this government consistently trampling on the constitutional authority of this House? Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, that was some incredible doublespeak from my colleague across the way. It's actually the RCMP who has said this, and I quote, the RCMP's ability to receive and use information obtained through this production order and under the compulsory powers afforded by the Auditor General Act in the course of a criminal investigation 
could give rise to concerns under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. There is significant risk that the motion can be interpreted as a circumvention of normal investigative processes and charter protections. For a party that claims to respect the police, they certainly don't respect police independence. Exactly. The Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms also includes Sections 3, Sections 4 and Sections 5, which is about the democratic rights of Canadians. And Canadians have the right to be democratically elected on the floor of this House. And the majority of this House has demanded the production of these documents related to the $400 million spending scandal. We did the same thing with the Winnipeg Lab documents. Why does this government consistently ignore the democratic wishes of the people's elected representatives and deny this House The, hon the Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney, Mr. Speaker, Attorney, Mr. Speaker, Attorney General. I have a lot of respect for that member opposite because he usually stands up for institutions, including this place. What he's not standing up for right now is for the independence of law enforcement in this country. The independence of law enforcement is pivotal. And what my colleague was emphasizing is that usually the, my friends opposite are constantly listening to the police. This is what the Deputy Chief of Deputy Commissioner of the RCMP said on the news yesterday. It's a very dangerous situation. The rule of law is predicated on a, upon a separation between what Parliament is doing and what law enforcement agencies are doing, in this case the RCMP. We're listening to those RCMP commissioners and former commissioners. I wish the member opposite would do the same. The Honourable Member from Calgary Heritage. Mr. Speaker, for years they've known Sami Dun as a known terror affiliate. On October 7th, they chanted, we are Hezbollah, we are Hamas, death to Canada, death to America, death to Israel. They incited hate, they incited terror, they burned our flag. Why does our foreign minister fail to act when Canada is threatened? Well, she told Tom Mulcair, it's about the demographics of her voters. Oh. Mr. Speaker, why does this minister put partisan politics over Canadian national security interests. Order. The Honourable Minister for Public Security. Mr. Speaker, our government is deeply concerned about the national security interests of Canadians. That's why we support the law enforcement agencies and the security agencies that do this important work. That's why we rely on their advice to decide when the government under the Criminal Code of Canada should list a terrorist entity. Mr. Speaker, good news. These security agencies are constantly reviewing a whole series of organizations to determine if the threshold has been met. I recently talked to them as, er as, as late as this morning, and I'm very confident that we'll have some important news very quickly. Lana the Honourable Member for Dorval lachine lasalle Mr. Speaker, Canadians work hard all year round to be able to afford to go on holiday and visit their families. They want quality service from airlines. Last week, the Supreme Court ruled in favour of our government's approach to protect Canadian air passengers. Can the Minister of Transport share this excellent news with us? Thank you. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board and Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, in 2019, we were the first government in Canadian history to pass legislation protecting air passengers. And that was the right thing to do, Mr. Speaker. Last week, the Supreme Court ruled in favour of Canadians. Canadians have rights. Canadians deserve protection. Canadians can count on our Liberal government. Unlike the Conservatives, we will always stand up for travellers and their rights. Thank you very much. The Honourable Member from Vancouver East. Sudan now has the world's worst displacement of children anywhere. 17 months into this devastating humanitarian crisis, not one single Sudanese Canadian loved one has gotten to safety in Canada. A family member in Vancouver was desperate to bring his sister and her two daughters to safety. 
With months of inaction, the sister has now perished. The two children are alone. Will the minister expedite processing and expand eligibility of his restrictive program to include vulnerable children in Sudan? Good question. The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Citizenship and Refugees. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member knows well that this was a plan that was devised with community members, with community organizations, and we worked hand in hand with them to move to put out this program to get 8,000 Sudanese people fleeing war. I, we plan to make sure that these people are here, hopefully by the end of the year, more next year. But I will constantly, constantly be working with those community members that I will be meeting with as early as tomorrow to evolve the program if need be. Thank you. Bravo, here, here. Bravo. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Richemont, Arthabasca. Mr. Speaker, I've been asking questions in this House for over a year now, and yet there is a ridiculous tax issue that has not been addressed. Here's an example of the absurdity. When someone goes to Tim Hortons and buys six donuts, they are exempt from paying taxes. But if they decide to buy six sugar-free, healthy bars, they do have to pay taxes. This means that people are paying more for healthy products, which is bad for our local entrepreneurs who face unfair competition from multinationals. Can the Prime Minister tell us whether he intends to ask his Minister of Finance to rectify this ridiculous situation? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've discussed the matter many times with my colleague. I understand that he cares deeply about this issue. This would involve some major changes to be made by the Department of Finance and the Department of Health, and we can look into the matter further. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It being 3.19 p.m. Oh, point of order. The Honourable Member for Port Neuf, Jacques Cartier. Mr. Speaker, earlier, during question period, the Member for Outremont used non-parliamentary language. I would like to invite her to take back what she said and to apologize. The Honourable Member for Outremont. Mr. Speaker, I think if you look back at the answer, you will see that that language has already been used, and I will be happy to give a further answer once you have been able to look into this. From Regina Capella is rising on a point of order. <laughs>